Hey everyone, welcome to Buick Outdoors. If you're new around here, my name is Sheldon Marion, and today we're not venturing far from the house at all. We're actually just uh, in the yard here, right by my sheds and all that stuff, because we are getting overrun with Saskatoons. Uh, we've been needing to pick these for a while now. They're, uh, they're starting to weigh down the branches to the point where uh, they almost look like grapes. And uh, yeah, they're starting to kind of bend the trees over. So today I'm gonna do the job of picking these Saskatoons and uh, either freeze them or we'll make something out of them, not too sure yet. But as you can see, this is just one of the many, many trees that are out here in the yard and they are completely full of berries so i'm gonna get to uh picking here and then later on we'll uh we'll do something with these Well, one thing I want to show you guys what you might find on uh, some Saskatoons is you get kind of like this kind of orange dust and rust looking stuff you see it on this leaf right here and then also on these berries themselves uh, mainly what that is is if you're in an area where you have a lot of junipers uh, what I've been told that it's what well, it's called anyway is just like juniper rust and basically what it is is well i'm saying like i know what i'm talking about but i'm pretty sure what it is is just kind of like the pollen off the juniper berries so right now it's not too too bad that we're a little bit later in the year it's about mid july right now uh but like a week or two weeks ago all of these berries were just orange so they were still nice and purple and blue and all that, but they were just completely coated in that uh, juniper rust. But now that we've had a couple of rainstorms and uh, it kind of washed everything off and you know, supposedly it's not, not bad to eat, uh, it might be a little bit bitter and that's about it. So even if they are kind of orange and covered in that stuff, I'm pretty sure you can still pick them. Just make sure that you rinse them off real good uh, before you eat them. Huh? Gotta take a catch up break. And there you go, my friend. <laughs> Alright, my friend. I gotta get back to picking berries, okay? You gonna hang out with me for a little bit? Alright? There you go. Let me grab my bucket. What? I gotta go back to picking berries, my buddy. Hey. <laughs> Alrighty, so this part here is pretty straightforward. We just have a little strainer. Now we're gonna take all of our buckets. Dump that in there. Nothing left in the bucket. Now we're just going to run some cold water on these. You see any uh, leaves and stuff like that, just kind of pick them out. Other than that, and just try to wash these up as best as we can. Hopefully there's any of that juniper rust kind of stuff on there. 
Let it all get washed down the drain. Now what we'll do is we'll let these dry up for a little bit. And basically I'm just going to be putting them into Ziploc bags and freezing them until I get home. Well you guys, I am back from work and today we're cooking up some of these Saskatoons. Uh, so far the only thing that I've really done is I put the Saskatoons into my pan here. And I've cooked them up until they started to boil a little bit. And pretty well as they're staying nice and hot here, I'm cooking at about a two and a half to three power here on the old gas stove. And basically I'm just mashing them up. And uh, yeah, we're going to turn this into a nice little uh, Saskatoon jelly, I think, today. Uh, I was planning on making like a jam or like a pie filling, but eh, I changed my mind. So I'm mashing these up uh, once I get all these uh, pretty well popped and all nice and squishy here. And then we'll be ready to move on to the next step. And it's pretty straightforward, easy thing. We're just going to pretty well put it uh, into another pot, but we're going to strain it through a little strainer. And seeing how I just finished doing up some uh, choke cherry syrup, I already have everything all ready and set up. We got pots over there, a little screen, canner, lids all ready to go. So just going to continue on from the choke cherries. Alrighty, so we already... Uh, we already have this stuff set up just from doing our choke cherry syrup. So now what we're going to do, we're going to add this by the spoonful here. Pretty well push it around. Try to get as much syrup out of here as possible. As you squish it down, you can see all the juices coming out. We're gonna get quite a bit here. We that's just one scoop. We probably got another four or five in here. So as we're doing this, what I'll do is I'm gonna grab a bowl and all this stuff that's in here. I'll put that into a bowl, and then before we uh, finish cooking this, I'll put this into a cheesecloth and wring it through the cheesecloth. But for right now, I'm just gonna grab a bowl. Give this a couple more pushes. Try to get as much juice out as possible just in this process. It's much easier to do it now. Now grab it. Transfer it into a bowl. And then we're basically just going to keep doing this until all of these are done. Okay, so now that we have our cheesecloth here. Take some of these seeds and skins. Yeah, about that many, maybe a little more. Basically, bundle this up like a little package and start twisting and squeezing. You should see a little more juice coming out. Quite a bit more. Right on. So basically I'm just going to be doing this until I get the rest of those seeds all done. And then uh, yeah, we'll turn this back on to the stove and we'll finish cooking it. So I just finished uh, squeezing all these berries out. Now it looks like a big old bear came and took a poop in my bowl. But uh, we'll grab this, get that out of the way. And then this is what we're left with. We got... Uh, a couple of cups anyways and uh, we can do a taste test here uh oh so it's it's still it's pretty sweet one second I dropped some on the floor here anyways it's pretty sweet uh, it tastes just like the berries off the tree uh, that's what we're gonna be doing. Uh, we'll put her back onto the stove here and 
Once it reduces a little bit, I might add just a, a touch of sugar. Um, not overly too much, just just to kick that sweeten up, sweetness up just that little bit. Well, our uh, syrup here is just starting to steam a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add just a touch of sugar here. Uh, it's not quite half a cup. And I'm not even going to add it all. I don't want that much, so I don't even know what that was, an eighth of a cup of sugar. We'll see here. We'll mix it all in. We'll give her a taste test. And then we'll see. And like I said, you know, the Saskatoons are already really sweet. So uh, basically just... And that just to have that little touch more sweetness to it and then we'll be just slowly uh, bringing this down reducing it into a bit of a thicker consistency so it's a nice thick syrup and in the meantime we have that on the go so those are getting nice and hot those are starting to get hot I'll have to turn that down here real soon so we don't boil them and then uh, yeah so we'll see this should be Pretty well, yeah, it'll be close enough, anyways. Give this a bit of a taste test. Uh, we could add just a, a touch more. So we'll see. Maybe we'll end up adding. I don't know what that was. It was roughly a quarter cup of sugar. There. Put that little bit back and. We'll just call that good enough. Anyways, I'm going to get this all stirred in. And then once we get this stirred in, I'll reduce it down some more. And then you guys can see that process. And then we'll get to drying this up. Well, as you can see here, we've reduced it down a little bit more. It's getting a little bit thicker. Uh, if we do the old spoon test here, it's not overly too thick. It licks the back of the spoon just just barely, but it also sticks to the spoon not too bad. So I think for this one here, what we're going to do is we're just going to call this one good enough. Oh man, that's about a, the perfect amount of sweetness to that. Uh, so now what I got going on here, uh, we'll turn that off. These are nice and warm. I just turned this off so it's nice and hot. Uh, basically, I will grab a couple of these jars out of here. Uh, I think what I'll do is I'll start with one of these 250 milliliter jars and a 125. There we go. Now we'll see. Uh, how much we have left over once we fill these up so I kind of need two hands for this so I'm just gonna set up the camera and then uh, yeah we'll start filling up these jars okay so we got our funnel oh this might take her all I'll put the rest into this one. Now we'll grab a cloth that's just slightly damp. Go around the rim. This one here, I'm just going to throw that one into the fridge. Uh-huh. Grab this. Grab ourselves a lid. Oh, hot. And then pretty well grab this here. Put it back into the counter. Now that it's back in the counter, just have to see how much water that we have above the lid. So we have a good 
inch above it so we are good to go pretty well I'll turn this back on leave that at high once we get a big rolling boil happening we'll be able to put the lid on and then because of our altitude here we will cook this for 15 minutes and then it'll be canned so i'll see you guys back here uh in about 20 minutes it'll take about five minutes for it to start rolling boil we'll put the lid on 15 minutes after that we'll pull it off Alrighty, so we uh, let this boil for 15 minutes. Uh, once the 15 minutes was up, we turned the water or the heat off and let it sit until the boiling stopped. And now we just move the pot away from the range there. That way when we grab this jar, we can just grab it and lift it straight up. Because according to the book, you're supposed to pick these up without tilting them, bring it over, Set her there, and now we're gonna let her sit for about 24 hours, it says. So, we're gonna leave that there, and that's gonna wrap this up. So, hopefully, you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, hit, hit the uh, like button there down in the corner. Uh, leave me a comment, let me know what you gotta do with your Saskatoons. Uh, you know, today I felt like making syrup. Some days I'll throw them into you know, a little bit of ice cream or something like that, you know. Always change things up a little bit. But anyways, you guys, I hope you like it. Again, uh, hit the like button, leave me a comment, subscribe to the channel. We'll catch you on the next one.